And finally, they saved the biggest and best piece of news for the very end. The season four loaded update just went live in Vanguard. We got the patch notes right here. We're gonna be hopping in game, testing the changes. And just when we thought we were getting no new content for Vanguard zombies, we just got some massive game changing updates that people have been asking for for a long time here in Vanguard zombies. As always, we're gonna be covering all the new Vanguard updates in a rapid style video where we quickly go over all the new information. That way you can quickly watch this video and get right back in the game. If you're new here want to sub, I'd greatly appreciate it. And with that, let's hop right in. Vanguard, season four loaded patch notes. Starting off with the MP changes. Enemy nameplates can no longer be seen through various surfaces across multiple maps. So there was issues where you're able to see the enemy nameplate through different objects on certain maps. That's been fixed. Then we've got the brand new MP map, Desolation. In a listening post near the Pacific Mountainside, Desolation is littered with destructible aspects to create uh, awesome gameplay scenarios. Look for Desolation 24-7 playlist. However, we can actually hop into game because it's in private matches. Okay, this is not what I expected it to look like at all. We're just going to do a really quick run through of it real quick. I don't want to waste too much time on this, but it's almost like a night map. And there's definitely a lot of buildings on this. When I was imagining this in my head when they were talking about it earlier on, uh, yeah, I didn't, didn't quite understand this, but oh, it's got like... Okay, so it's got a big open middle area. I mean, maybe not, not super open, but uh, I could see this being a somewhat fun map. It's definitely bigger than the last few Vanguard maps we've got, but it's not massive. It's not as big as the big Vanguard maps, but it's bigger than Sphere in the last few. There are a lot of hiding spots on this. It's got a lot of just objects all over the place, but uh, it'll probably play pretty well. Kind of excited to give it a shot. It, I don't know if I'm gonna be playing it nonstop like I do with the other new maps, but I'm cool. I'm glad we're getting cooler new maps here in Vanguard. Then we've got some changes to the already existing maps here in Vanguard. Gondola and Paradise. Both of these maps now have areas you're no longer going to be able to shoot through. US Texas, the map that was added at the start of Season 4. They've changed some stuff with S&D. They've fixed a spot where people were getting stuck. And they've also stopped two different areas that people were able to shoot through. Now for modes, Blueprint Gun Game. They've added several new blueprints. Search and Destroy. Address an issue that caused inaccurate death stat on the scoreboard. For Ranked Play, we've got two new restrictions. Weapons the Vargo S is now restricted in rank play. I'm not sure why they're going to restrict it before we even get to kind of see how good it is. Perk Serpentine is now also restricted in rank play. We're also getting a brand new operator. I don't even know how to pronounce this name. I'm not going to try. I end up butchering the crap out of it. Understood strategy from a young age. As a child in Nigeria, he excelled at chess, quickly surpassing his teachers. Here's the rest of its bio. And yeah, the only way you're going to be able to get this operator is by buying it in a bundle, which is probably going to cost 24 bucks. Personally, I haven't been buying much of any of the bundles in Vanguard. I just don't think they're worth it. I'm only going to ever get this operator if they release like a cool ultra skin with it. Then I'll get the bundle to review it. But the basic bundle, I I'm going to pass on it. Weapons. Added inspect animations for the 1916 marksman rifle, the scout crusher, ice pick, and sawtooth melee weapons. I didn't even know these four weapons didn't have inspect animations, but those have been added. Increased grace period for slide kill challenges from 0.15 seconds to 0.5 seconds after a loading. That's a pretty big change. That's like three times more forgiving. So now instead of 0.15 seconds after sliding, you get a whole half a second after sliding and it's still gonna end up counting for the challenge requirement. New Vargo S Assault Rifle. Trading firepower for improved accuracy and fire rate. This rifle excels in medium to long range engagements. Complete an unlock challenge or purchase the bundle to earn this weapon. And it just says get 15 close range kills. I think that's a typo. I don't think there's any way they're gonna make it where to unlock the Vargo, you go in game and you get 15 close range kills. Cause usually they make you play 15 different matches. I assume it's probably get one close range kill with an AR in 15 different matches. Uh, I can't tell, it's not actually in game right now. It's not gonna be in game till tomorrow. So we can't read off what it says in game, but uh, maybe you actually get this for just getting 15 close range kills. That would be the easiest weapon unlock we have had in Modern Warfare 2019, Vanguard and Cold War. This will be the easiest one we've seen so far. I doubt that's the case. It's probably gonna make you play 15 different games. Now for perks, they fixed issues with piercing vision when using it in free for all. They fixed an issue with the guard dog kill streak when multiple were called in. Then we've got user interface and experience. None of this is kind of game changing bugs. We got some battle pass stuff for free for clan stuff, some armory filter stuff, some notifications that should have been popped up. Issues with the clear all new weapons. Bundles and cosmetic. Improved image quality for bundles and logos in the store. Breath of the Godzilla bundle had some bugs with it and then some other effects with other bundles. And that's really all for MP. Now, 
Moving into zombies, maps, Shinonuma. Address an issue with Wonder Weapon parts not appearing in the offline mode of the map. So now you're not gonna have any issue building the Wonder Weapon in the offline mode. Addressed issues related to zombies pathing on Shinonuma. I haven't had a lot of issues with zombie pathing on Shinonuma. Maybe there's like that one zombie at the very end of the round that's just kind of off in the middle of nowhere. Hopefully that's what they fix with that. Addressed visual issues on Shinonuma. That's kind of cool. Weapons, Wonder Weapons, Wonder Waffle, dg2 increased reload speed of the weapon this is one of the biggest complaints i saw about the wonder waffle this thing took forever to reload address an issue where zombies were sometimes not being killed after being hit with the weapon address an issue where zombies were not being electrocuted with the weapon if they were previously under the effects of a stun grenade with that i want to hop in game get the wonder waffle and i want to see how quickly we can reload it now all right here we go wonder waffle dg2 secured let's go ahead waste all our ammo let's check out this reload speed honestly i'm gonna be perfectly honest i don't notice a big difference but let's maximize our reload speed this was a terrible idea i need to buy maxed out uh speed cola all right zombie chill there we go tier three tier four come on no big deal just slurping up all these perks now we've got the reload one at max capacity so let's spam these three shots and now let's check out the reload that does seem faster i don't know if it's a placebo effect but that seemed faster than what it was before N yeah yeah we, we that, that's noticeably faster right it's not just me then we have the unlock challenge for the vargo s assault rifle in zombies use assault rifles to kill 20 or more enemies without getting hit 50 times yes 50 jackrabbit medals with an ar to unlock it in zombies if we've got to play 15 different matches in mp i still might prefer this over mp i'm not exactly sure we're just gonna to have to wait and see what the actual challenge is on mp if it's just getting 15 hip fire kills in mp that's our close range that's gonna be the easiest so i don't know you'll have to wait for the guide on that but yeah 50 jackrabbit medals you know I'm, 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 I'm leaning towards mp right now then we've got gameplay adjustments on round base map they have nerfed the cost of crafting armor on shinonuma level one armor is only going to cost 500 now i think it was 750 before this level two is only going to be a thousand and level three is only going to be two thousand so getting armor and getting maxed out armor is going to be a lot more easy and you're going to be able to do it earlier on shinonuma which makes sense you were able to get maxed out armor really quickly on the objective base modes but shinonuma it took forever to get all the salvage needed you're going to be able to get armor quicker and you're going to be able to max it out quicker let's go ahead and see if that is live oh yeah it is live so 500 a thousand we were able to on round 17 get second tier armor and we can almost get tier three we are only 500 salvage away so you'll probably be able to max out your armor before round 20 now and finally they save the biggest and best piece of news for the very end zabala the deceiver increases Zabala round spawn cooldown in Shinonuma. This means there's gonna be more time between the amount that spawn in. So you're gonna be seeing less Zabala spawning in and Zabala will no longer enter an immune state. And this is what I've been saying ever since she launched. Zabala is one of the easiest mini bosses we've ever had, but she has the illusion of being hard. With all these immune phases, she takes forever to take down and it makes you think she's a really hard boss when she was never that hard. She was just annoying. Cause what happened is you'd break a mask and then she was immune and you'd sit around twiddling your thumbs, waiting for her to be able to damage her again. And then you'd break another mask. And then guess what? she was immune again and you'd repeat, repeat that process there was three different immune states for zabala but what it says right here zabala will no longer enter an immune state so you should be able to just keep breaking the mask taking her down a lot quickly now which is going to save you so much time this was the most annoying part about vanguard zombies i hated dealing with zabala not because she was hard it's just if you were going for round 100 zabala would spawn in and you'd be like all right time to sit here and wait for three different masks so we're gonna go and test that out but before you do that there's one last change stability address various stability issues so that's been fixed but i'm excited i really want to see how this change is gonna work all right here we go here's a zabala let's see how quickly we can just spam the wonder wait it says immune did the update not work it i'm pretty sure the, the, the patch notes legit said there was no more immune did i read it wrong because she's immune yeah, that definitely... I mean, I felt like we were able to take her down faster, but not really that faster. Yeah, she's... Um, I don't know if I was testing that wrong, but we have the update. We know the update's live. 
because we were able to get armor at a cheaper price, right? So I'm not a thousand percent sure what's going on with this. But here you can clearly see that it states Zabella will no longer enter an immune state. Maybe we were still doing damage and it was saying immune even though she was. No, because we were spamming the shotgun at her face. Okay, for testing purposes, I'm going to find one more Zabala. All right, so here's another Zabala. Let's try this one more time. Throw a decoy down and then let's just start spamming Zabala. Is she, I think she... Oh, crap, 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 crap. Uh, I think she might have still been taking damage after she was immune. Dude, it's hard to tell. All right, Frost Blast, go. All right, so get her into the immune phase. I, okay, so to be completely honest, I really don't know what's going on. We tried three different Zabalas. Each and every one of them did have a phase where I was not able to damage them whatsoever, even though the patch notes read differently. Season four reloaded doesn't launch till tomorrow, but we did get the patch right now and other parts of the patch are currently in effect in game, like the armor change. So we should have seen this take effect as well. I don't think anything's gonna change tomorrow when it when the actual season four reloaded starts. It should have already taken effect. Maybe I'm wrong. Maybe tomorrow this will change. It did feel like I was taking down Zabella faster than prior to the update, but that could have just been placebo because I was looking for something. But when she was in the immune phase, I a thousand percent was not dealing damage to her. So uh, yeah, I'll keep you guys updated once we get more information on this, what's exactly going on. And if it does change tomorrow, I'll put a comment down below and I'll be like, hey, it's now fully in effect. But uh, from what it looks like, I, I don't know. It doesn't seem like the whole Zabala not being immune is currently affecting the game. But with that, guys, we're going to end this one here. If you want to see more in-depth zombie testing with patch notes and be fully up to date with any sort of Call of Duty news, make sure to sub to the channel. If you love to like or comment, I greatly appreciate it because it does help promote this video a little bit more. And I'll see you guys in the next one. Peace.